Hey everybody, it's Sarah with House Copper. Um, first of all, I summer started and it's been a few months and I started to go, oh my gosh, I haven't posted a video in I think like three months. Um, and I blame that partially on, I have three children home from school and they need to be kept busy. They've actually been in the shop helping me build things, but I kind of forget about the videos cause I'm too busy building and shuttling kids. Um, but also um, <clears throat> uh, we had our first workshop here in this space uh, a few weeks ago in uh, July here and it was awesome. It was three days of building. I think my favorite part was not only watching everybody fall in love with different practices and you know getting so excited they're buying tools and stakes now and building their own uh, metal shops where they live um, around the world but also um, by the end the last day everyone knew where like hammers were and where everything else was and they just started to build their own things and do their own stuff and it was so cool to just watch everybody feel that confident um, with within this metal shop so that was cool so uh, but anyway, because of all that crazy, I am very late in posting videos and um, I think summer is going to be a couple more weeks. It's going to be a little nuttier, but then my goal is to post at least one, if not two videos a month again, starting this fall. So fingers crossed, that's the goal. But anyway, just to tie this over, I'm going to do a video today on uh, bases. So um, the circular bases for building pots, cups, bowls, mugs, anything like that. So if you're doing um, building in the flat, like I'm assuming a lot of you who are watching this might be doing, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be building um, bases and I'm going to do it a couple ways. I'm going to do it using the burring machine, but also a stake um, that is a, it's like a bottoming stake or a pipe stake, some people call it. And um, you'll notice, and I'll kind of speed it up, but you do go back and forth a lot. And that's because as you manipulate the base, uh, it'll kind of tweak in little areas, no matter how perfect you have your measurements, um, the, the, they'll get like to be little kinks and then you want to flatten it so that your, your, you know, mug or bowl will sit flat and then that creates other kinks in the middle. So then you go to the stake, then you go back to your machine and then back to the stake. If you don't have a stake, you can use PVC pipe clamped to a bench. Um, just the goal is to have the diameter to be similar to the base that you are um, working on. Now, if you don't have PVC pipe or clamps or a bench, I'm also gonna show you a way to do this, to raise a, a, a burr um, for just a simple, very basic lap seam um, using nothing but pliers. Um, sometimes people will use this at different ways um, to kind of prep a burr. Um, but again, it, it's kind of like, if all you have is a piece of pliers and you wanna build something, I'm gonna show you that method too. So without any more, let's start building. Okay, now if you notice, um, there is a tiny bit of a burr here and um, you might get it with cutting or you might get it when you are working in on your um, circle cutter. But you're going to, um, I think this is an eighth, see now, I, you want to make sure it's well it is so don't go too tight on your machine if you have one and I'm not going to use a glove because then you can actually kind of see otherwise my glove would be in your way and you go real gentle keeping this pressed this piece of the metal pressed against your backstop my goal is to have my new assistant help video in uh, the next rounds so that she can get all kind of angles for you that I can't always get when it's just me and a, um, a phone holder. So yay for when Liz starts. But you're going to start pulling up and I can already tell where there's going to be kinks. So if you can see right here, it's already kinking. That is going to continue to be that place you know you're displacing the metal so it kind of doesn't know where to go and uh, that's what makes this machine tricky and then as you can also see this whole piece is curving and that also happens um, the more material you turn and also the more uh, the 
you know, that either how small it is and how, uh, and how much material you're moving all plays into this. So I'm going to stop here and show you. So look, not great, not ideal. And I wasn't even pressing really hard on this. So we're going to uh, manipulate this a little bit. All right, so clearly this is warped a little bit. So what you wanna do is gently press wherever it's, and you can see I'm making actually more kinks um, wherever I'm pushing, but if I don't, my base will not sit flat and you will have a cup or something that wobbles. And you obviously wanna do this on a surface that's not gonna scratch that side. And if you can see, I still, it's not perfect. Never is. Feels like it should be, but it's not. All right. Now I'm going to work out these kinks on this stake here. By putting it on here, this is the closest I have to this diameter that I'm going to use, though. Yeah, I think my other one is just a little too wide, and I don't want that. But what I'm doing is I'm only going to hit right here, and I'm only going to use a rawhide hammer and I'm going to hold this right against this face here because otherwise you'll warp it but you can already see how these have smoothed out see that so if I go here and I'm only going to hit like right along the very top There. And because I'm holding this against here, you're not getting that same concaveness. So that's what we do. And it's a lot of hammering just to get it perfect. Sometimes the burring machine doesn't do this, but sometimes it does. And mine tends to, once I get to around an eighth inch burr, it gets real uh, bubbly on my burrs. It's just the machine. Now, because it's a little warped again, I'm going to keep flattening like that. Another kink there, another kink down there. Come on. There we go. Now we're getting there. So we're getting that 90 inch. Now, I could go back on my burring machine or I could test it now on my body, but that is about how you prep a bottom using both the machine and this. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with a, um, with the pliers. All right, so just the pliers like this, and then you can mark off, you see I've done an eighth of an inch, you can mark off whatever your burr is and then you just, wherever you've made marks, you start to very gently, not, not all at once or you'll really kink your metal. You can start to bring up your burr using a pliers. This is ridiculously painstaking, but it can also, if you don't have a burring machine and you don't wanna eyeball on a stake or a PVC pipe, this can do what the burring machine did for earlier. It can kind of, it's like another option. So again, if you don't have a burring machine and you want to kind of prep your, you just keep going around and you wanna prep your, your burr without a burring machine, this is how you do it. Everybody can get a pliers, not, it's hard to get a burring machine so this will do what a burring machine can do much faster, but then at least you are much more accurate with getting whatever burr you want when you start hammering it, if that makes sense. So I should have a pretty consistent 
eighth inch burr, press started, and now I can use this as my guiding on the stake. So here we are back at a stake. Again, you can use PVC pipe and we are going to hand raise this burr. Oh, you're gonna just, I'll try and do it on the side here so that you can see. So as you can see, it's starting to go into that 90 degree angle, which is what we want for this particular type of seam. And you just start tap, tap, tapping away. And if you can see, I'm kind of rotating this so that it eventually will sit flat, but you can't do it right away. You almost need to catch your seam hammer it and then start to bring the body in like that if you can watch my hand here if you want to see so I start and then I bring it in pretty nifty huh all right this one is the one we just did on by a hand. This is the one we did by machine. They are both bird. And here is the body. So here's the one, let's see. It's always like a moment of truth. Yep, fits and doesn't come off. Great, let's see about the other one. Sometimes the burring machine makes it too tight. on? Nope. There. There we go. Okay, so that's it. That's how to do a base both with a burring machine, with a pliers, a hammer, and a metal stake or a piece of PVC if that's all you have. Um, as always, if you have other ideas or comments, questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, I am slow at responding, but I do always respond. Um, and I will hopefully get another video up sometime in um, August. It is August. Okay, sometime in September. I'll try and get back to at least one, if not two, um, a, a month. And I appreciate your patience while I try and run a business and orders and children and a farm and all the crazy. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and tell other people about the channel and um, pick up the book, Copper, Iron and Clay, wherever books are sold. And I um, really appreciate you guys watching. So I will see you here at House Copper next time.